Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today I wanna to show you how you could create a quiz in a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. This is extremely valuable if you're an educator or even if you work in a corporate environment and you really just wanna make a presentation a little bit more fun by including a quiz. Whatever your reason, it's extremely easy to insert a quiz. I'm gonna show you how you could create questions, how you could define what the correct response is to one of those questions, and even how you could weight those questions differently. Maybe one question's worth a little bit more than, say, another question. As someone taking the quiz, I'll show you how you could show them their results in real time, and as the person who created the quiz, or maybe the teacher, you could see in aggregate how your class or group performed, and you could even dig into the details to see how an individual performed. This is gonna leverage Microsoft Forms, which integrates seamlessly into Microsoft PowerPoint. To take advantage of this, you need to be on either a work or school account. Unfortunately, if you have a personal Microsoft 365 account, you won't be able to do this. All right, well, why don't we jump on the PC and I'll show you step-by-step -step how you can insert a quiz. Here I am on my PC and I have Microsoft PowerPoint open. This is the latest and greatest version that comes with Microsoft 365. For the tutorial today, I thought long and hard about a good example and I thought maybe we could create a quiz on me so you could learn a little bit more about me. To create a quiz, the first thing that we need to do is to insert a new slide into our presentation. This is where we're going to put our quiz. To insert a new slide, let's click on the Home tab on top and then click on New Slide and that'll insert a new slide into our presentation. Next, we wanna insert the quiz onto this slide. To do that, we're gonna go back up to the tabs once again and click on Insert. In the middle of the ribbon, we see an option here for Microsoft Forms. If you've never heard of Microsoft Forms before, this is a Microsoft product that allows you to create surveys, polls, and quizzes. The really nice thing is people taking the quiz and also people administering the quiz can see the results in real time. In this video, the scope is limited to inserting a quiz into a PowerPoint presentation. If instead you wanna see the full and rich functionality of Microsoft Forms, I did a separate video on it and you can find a link in the description. Let's go ahead and click on Forms. This opens up a pane on the right-hand side for Microsoft Forms, and we're gonna use this to insert a quiz into our presentation. Within the pane, you see two different options. One of them is to create a new form, and the other is to create a new quiz. What is the difference between these two? With a new form, you typically use this if you wanna say create a poll or a survey where there isn't necessarily a correct response. With a quiz, on the other hand, you're gonna go through and define what the correct response is, and you're gonna be able to grade the quiz at the end of it. And that's what we wanna to do today. I'm gonna to click on New Quiz. This opens up a browser window, and it drops me in Microsoft Forms where we're going to create this quiz. Now, first off, within this page, it's just a blank canvas where we can go ahead and create any type of quiz we want. First off, I need to type in a title for my quiz, and I'm simply gonna call this the Kevin Stratford Quiz. Along with the title, I can also insert an image, but today I'm okay without an image. Down below, I can also enter a description. I'll go ahead and type something in. Now that I've entered a title and a description for my quiz, I need to add some questions. And to do that, I'm gonna click on this button that says add new. When I click on add new, that shows me a number of different question types that I could insert. I could insert a choice question, a free form text question, rating, date. When I click on this dropdown, I see a whole bunch of different options as well. You could even have people upload a file. At the very bottom, depending on how complex or comprehensive your quiz is, you could even put things into different sections. For today's example, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and I'm simply going to insert a few choice questions. So I'm gonna click on the first option. This opens up my first question and I can go ahead now and type in my question. I figured a good way to start my quiz is to ask people about me and my family. So my first question is, who is Kevin Stratford's most well-known relative? And I do have a very well-known relative. You'll find out in a moment who that is. Over on the right-hand side, once again, I could insert an image or media, so whether it's a photo or a video file, but this is just gonna be the straight answer, so we're not gonna insert any media. Down below, I could insert options for my question. These are the different potential answers that someone can choose. 
For the first option, I'm gonna type in Tom Cruise. Is there any relation between Tom Cruise and Kevin Stratford? I don't know. Next, I'm gonna insert Winston Groom. If you've never heard of Winston Groom before, he is the author of the famous book, Forrest Gump. Lastly, I'm gonna click on add option. This will expose one more option and I'm gonna type in Connor Murphy. This is a famous YouTuber and bodybuilder. Now that I've added my three options, I'm content with these different options. If I wanted to add additional options, I could click on this plus again and I could add any number of options here. Now with all of these different options, I wanna define which one is the correct answer. And it turns out that Winston Groom is related to Kevin Stratford, the author of Forrest Gump. To indicate that this is the correct answer, I go over on the right hand side while I hover over the answer and there's a check mark here. When I click on the check mark, that now indicates that this is the correct answer when someone goes through and takes the quiz. One thing I can do though is there might be a lot of people who might think that Tom Cruise is related to Kevin and I don't wanna waste this opportunity. We could use this as a teaching moment. If I hover over once again, I see this message option. If I click on this, I could provide additional feedback to the respondent. So I'm gonna say, I wish, check the author of Forrest Gump. So if someone selects this, they'll see this message appear and I'll show you in a moment what this looks like. A few other things that I can do here, I could assign a number of points to this question if, let's say I wanted to wait one question more than another. If I leave this blank, it'll simply wait all questions evenly. Over on the right hand side, I could indicate whether I want someone to be able to select multiple answers. You could indicate whether it's required. And then you have this ellipses. The ellipses is always where additional settings hide. And let's take a quick moment to see what's under here. First off, I can shuffle the options. What this means is once I start adding more questions, I could shuffle the order in which they appear. Instead of having them all appear on the same screen, I could have it serve, I could have it appear as a drop-down list. Let's say I want to show any equations or math, I could click on math. I could include a subtitle as part of this question if I want to provide additional context. And then there's something called branching. With branching, depending on how someone answers one question, you could then show a different set of questions depending on their response. So you have lots of different functionality, but like I said earlier, I want to keep this example simple, so I'm going to simply Simply stick with the default here. It wouldn't be much of a quiz with only one question. Let's go ahead and add another question. Once again, I'm gonna click on add new. And for this, to keep things simple, I'm gonna go with a choice question. For this question, I'm gonna ask when did Kevin hit 100,000 subscribers? And let me type in a few different options. I've entered my three different options in and only one of them is correct. It turns out that 6-6-2020 is when I hit 100,000 subscribers. You might be wondering how do I even remember that? It turns out that's also my wedding anniversary and you could probably guess which milestone my wife decided to celebrate that day. Now that we've entered a second question, I wanna insert one more question. Once again, I'm gonna click on add new. We're gonna go with another choice question. And for this question, we're gonna ask who is your favorite YouTuber? And rather than providing many different options, I'm gonna delete option number two. So there will only be one option and we're gonna make this a required question. To be able to submit the quiz, you have to select someone. And yeah, this probably isn't a good quiz design, but I don't mind if we bias the results a little bit. Now that I've entered a few different questions into my quiz, I wanna show you some of the other controls that we have. Let's say you created a question and you wanna use it as a base for another question. You can copy the question or duplicate the question. Let's say that it turns out maybe this isn't the best question. You can delete it. I'm not gonna delete this one because I absolutely wanna leave it as part of my quiz. And you have a few more controls where you can move questions up or you can move questions down if you wanna define the order in which the questions appear on your quiz. Now that we've created a few different questions on the quiz, I wanna show you how we could preview what this looks like. To preview the quiz, let's go up to the top of our browser window and click on preview. This will show what the quiz looks like first off on your computer or on your desktop. You could also preview how it appears on a mobile device. Back on the main screen, along with previewing, we can also assign a different theme to my quiz. When I click on theme here, you'll see all these different themes that I could apply. Now, the default theme that I have here is a little boring, so let me spice things up a little bit, and maybe we'll go with this, this environment where you have a few different people talking and having a good time. 
Along with setting a theme, I can also share this quiz. Now, there are a few different ways I could share. I could copy a link. I could create a QR code that people can take a photo of on their phone. I could even embed it in a website or a Sway. And lastly, I can also mail it. However, in my case, I'm gonna be inserting this into a PowerPoint presentation, so there's no need to share through Microsoft Forums. So for now, I'm just gonna ignore this, but I wanted to show how you could share your quiz with more people if, say, you wanna get responses outside of your PowerPoint presentation. The last thing I wanna show on this page is some additional settings that you could set for your quiz. To access additional settings, go up to the ellipses in the top right hand corner, and then on the sub menu, let's click on settings. This opens up a settings pane, and there are three buckets of additional settings. I wanna briefly run through what you can do here. In the first bucket, you could toggle on or off whether you wanna show results automatically. What this means is that when someone completes their quiz, if it's turned on, they'll see whether they answered the questions correctly or incorrectly. If you're a teacher and you're having students take a quiz, you might wanna wait and turn this off so everyone has to finish their quiz first before you let them see whether they answered correctly or incorrectly. In the second bucket, you can set permissions for your quiz. You could either set it so anyone can respond Respond to the quiz or you could limit it to people in your organization or in your school. If you set it to people in your organization, you can set it to record the name of the individual who's filling out the quiz and you can limit it to one response per person. In the bottom bucket, we have a few more settings. The first one, accept responses. When it's checked on, people can come in and take the quiz. If you check it off, people are no longer able to complete the quiz. You can also set a start date and an end date if you wanna have a specific time for when people can take the quiz. You also have the ability to shuffle questions. What this means is that the questions won't be in a predefined order. Instead, for every individual taking the quiz, it'll appear in a different order. This could be an interesting strategy if say you're a teacher and you don't want students to copy from one another. Imagine a student says, hey, what did you answer for number three? Number three might be different for another student who they're asking. If I check shuffle questions within here, you could shuffle all the questions or you can lock specific questions. Let's say you want everyone to answer the same first, say two or three questions, and then beyond those, you wanna shuffle them. Here too, you can also customize the thank you message. When I click on here, it's just a generic response that says your response was submitted, but maybe you wanna make it a little more thoughtful and friendly. And here I'll change the message to say, thanks for participating in the Kevin Trivia Quiz. Down below, you also have notification settings. When someone completes the quiz, you could have it send an email receipt. And even as the organizer, you can get an email notification anytime someone successfully completes the quiz. We've gone through and we've configured the quiz. Let's go back to PowerPoint and see what it looks like there. I'm back in Microsoft PowerPoint and here I can see my quiz on the slide and it's using the theme that I selected in Microsoft Forms. And here now I see all of my questions. Let me go through and answer the quiz and we'll see how this works. So first off, who is Kevin Stratford's most well-known relative? Well, we learned just a moment ago that it's Winston Groom. But in this case, I'm gonna select Tom Cruise because I wanna show you what the incorrect message looks like. When did Kevin hit 100,000 subscribers? Well, that was on June 6th. Let's go ahead and select that. And last question, maybe the hardest question here, but who is your favorite YouTuber? I'd have to go with Kevin for this one. And now let's submit the quiz. Now I get the thanks message and here we can see that I customized the thank you message and it shows up here on the thank you page where it says thanks for participating in the Kevin trivia quiz. If I click on view results, I set the setting so it would show me how I answered all of my questions immediately. Right off the bat, I could see that I answered 67% of them correctly. I answered the first one incorrectly, and here I see the message that I defined in forms to use this as a learning opportunity to help direct me to the right answer. I could see for the second question and the third question that I answered these correctly, and I see the green check mark next to the correct answer. Let's say I wanna go back now and I wanna edit this quiz. Maybe I wanna add a question. Maybe I wanna edit one of the questions. To do that, I need to load forms just like I did when I originally inserted this. To do that, I go up to the top tabs. I click on insert. Once again, I navigate to the middle of the ribbon where it says forms and I click on that and that'll expose the side pane again. 
I can now see my quiz here. It says the Kevin Stratford quiz, and I have two options. One of them is I can edit, and when I click on edit form, once again, this opens up Microsoft Forms. I can see my quiz with all the questions, and then I could go back and I could add and I could edit any questions. Back in PowerPoint, not only can I go ahead and edit this quiz that I just created, but I could also insert the quiz again. Let's say, for instance, I remove this slide. Let me re-add a slide, and now I'm gonna insert this quiz onto this slide within my presentation, and this will insert the same quiz again. Now I get a response here saying that I've already submitted a response, and I'm only allowed to submit one response per person. This is what I'd expect based on the settings that I configured. I'm back in Microsoft Forms and I wanna show what the experience looks like as the quiz creator if you wanna check your results. Here, once again, I see all the questions that I created. There's a second tab here as well that says responses and I see that one response has come in. Let me click on this tab. When I click on the, on the tab, I see an overall view of how many people have completed my quiz. I see that there's been one response. I also see the average time it takes to complete my quiz. My three questions apparently take about 51 seconds to complete. And then I also see that the quiz is currently active, meaning that people can come in and complete the quiz. Once again, the ellipses always shows additional actions. If I click on that, I could delete all the quiz responses. I could print a summary, and I could even create a summary link if I wanna share the results of this quiz with others. Down below, here I see an aggregate view of how all of the people in my group responded. I only had one person respond, but here I could see overall how people performed. Now, not only can I look at how overall or in aggregate every respondee performed, I could click on review answers and this will allow me to review how each individual performed. So here I could see that Kevin took the quiz and he missed the first question, but he got the second and the third question correct. If I had additional students, I could click on this dropdown and choose one of the people who I wanna review the results for, or I could navigate through all the names. There's another button here as well that says post scores. If I click on this, I can go ahead and post the results to one of the people. If you remember back when I clicked into the settings, I had the option to automatically show the results upon completion of the quiz. I turned it on, but if I had turned it off, I can come through here and then manually push through the grade or the results to all the people who participate and all the respondees of the quiz. The last item to show on this page, I can also export all of the results into Microsoft Excel if I wanna do some more advanced analysis of how people performed on my quiz. All right, well that was a quick look at how you could create a quiz and then insert it into a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. If you learned how to create a quiz for PowerPoint, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope to see you next time. Bye.